G'day scrappers, welcome to another scrap session. Uh, this one's just uh, oddball things that I once again picked up from that hoarder's house. So I thought I'd just, uh, uh, yeah, do a bit of a session here and uh, have a bit of fun. Uh, kind of overdoing all the vintage PCs, they're all pretty much the same anyway. Uh, very similar, but still got quite a lot of them. This one's obviously Telecom Australia. AWA, it's a telecom controller. Uh, it's like a must be like a service box where they hook it into the old school uh, telephone system. And yeah, uh, really interesting. Uh, it, it's it, it's quite an interesting box, but I don't, you know, it's not something that I want to keep or anything like that. You know, you can only keep so much stuff, so. I'll just get rid of it, scrap it out, have a bit of fun, have a look inside. Yeah, got some really, you know, sort of reasonably oddball uh, electronics from this uh, hoard. So, uh, a lot of it, you know, some strange modems and and things well anything old school especially old school telecom it should you know we should get some you know half interesting things out of it I, i'm hoping that there's uh, you know a good telecom board in there we'll, we'll just check it out trying to still trying to reduce all the junk that's around just the plastic okay oh okay wow like a big nice big transformer there it's a big old capacitor that looks like it says logic so logic suggests that it's a logic board and yeah most of them are all uh, ceramics ICs so they've got to be good for gold recovery I mean it is telecom so it's most likely at least from the 80s okay so we've got three cards here so this could be interesting so there's our first card yep not bad um, yeah, as I've, you know, mentioned in the previous recent videos that the, the ceramic ICs, especially in the old school stuff, can be really good. And you, all you have to do to see for yourself is just pop off the top layer, which is just the ceramic. Okay. So if we can crack off that. Okay. So this one, these ones are sh showing no real gold it's it's more silvery stuff but it's got to be some kind of precious metal uh it'd have to be at least silver if not you know back in the day it could have could even be platinum you know you just don't know with this sort of stuff um and i think that's why it's important with uh, ic chips um, to not only just go for gold recovery, but see if there's other other metals in there. Um, yeah, so the same kind of deal here. Uh, mostly ceramic chips, and these these ones. Well, they're they're Motorola, but the same deal. So it couldn't be just tin. You know, back in that day, uh, it would have to be. Um, some other kind of precious metal because uh, yeah I see very little gold around apart from obviously the gold pins uh, so there'd have to be some kind of precious metal in these IC chips I, I refuse to believe that back in the day they would just use tin um, but you know I could be wrong but I seriously doubt it okay so 
yeah, been um, pretty busy again as usual. And I'm, a I'm actually going street scrapping tomorrow. So look out for that video. Uh, just going to go out and got to stretch the legs. We're, we're off the, uh, our temporary lockdown. So uh, I've only been going for five minutes and the camera's already starting to play up on me. I just don't, don't understand what it is. But we'll get through. Yeah. So, gosh, we certainly live in a strange world these days. Um, I just don't know what's going on anymore, you know. Uh, all this stuff that's going down and, uh, you know, crazy little lockdowns for one simple uh, outbreak, you know, where there's, you know, three or four people that got it from someone that's come from overseas and, oh, gosh. Um, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's not, not really good for businesses. They're there. They're being really hit hard. And, oh, uh, you know, I'd ask what's next, but, uh, well, they're already sort of putting it out there, kind of what's, what's next. Um, a new type of pandemic uh, and a cyber pandemic is what they're talking about now. This, uh, you know, World Economic Forum. Um, you know, it's funny how they... Uh, they kind of, they tell you in advance what, what they're uh, up to and uh, what they're doing. It's uh, so strange. And yeah, uh, so currently, well, you know, I don't know if you've heard of uh, Cyber Polygon, um, which is basically what the, the World Economic Forum uh, done a small simulation on and they're talking about it well on July the 9th they're doing another simulation of this uh, cyber polygon thing it's a cyber attack exercise and it's going to kind of be over the world and they basically will simulate a, a big cyber attack and to see where you know where countries and organizations uh, aren't prepared and how the computer systems would will go and who's going to be able to be hacked and who not um, I'd imagine the banks would be probably the strongest uh, secure because you know they, they put a lot of security things already in place but for general things like uh, you know, even uh, hospitals and stuff, you know, they don't really have a huge security thing. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm just not sure. I just don't know, you know, because this same organization worked out, you know, like done the, um, the COVID simulation. Um, and, you know, it's strange. It's like they know in advance kind of thing almost, you know, it's such a coincidence that um, three months after they do a COVID pandemic simulation, and that was funded also by, you know, the Gates Foundation and all that. Um, yeah, three months later, um, we have the actual pandemic. Uh, so, yeah, they, they must be, they're really good at... Uh, <laughs> Um, preempting what what could happen, and so okay, so that's just a basic board. I'm not going to worry about that now. I want to continue doing some interesting things. Yeah, so I don't know. It's you know, obviously, what they want is a global reset, and. Uh, First is another telecom 
box. It's actually a modem, and I've got two of these modems. Now these are real, they're data craft, made in Australia. Um, in December 84, it was manufactured. I got a couple of them. This one had all the cords cut, so I thought I'll scrap this one out and just to see what it's all about. Um, yeah, I was really looking forward. This is another item from the hoarder's house. And, uh, you know, I, I really love these oddball old school stuff. And I uh, especially love them when there's two of them or more. Yeah. Don't know how much luck I'm going to have in getting that one out. So we'll just have a squeeze at this. I'm hoping, I mean, it's a, it's a modem. So there's got to be a circuit board in there and old school, 84. Yeah, so old school technology. It's, we've got to get gold here, surely. <laughs> okay, so now, oh yeah. Yeah, so um, yeah, with this, uh, I'm probably just chirping on here, but uh, I think it's uh, significant. Uh, this planned global reset that the whole powers that be around the world that want to uh, change it and uh, apparently the only real way for a, a global reset to happen is similar to how the uh, the COVID pandemic sort of happened um, but on a bigger scale and apparently a, a cyber attack that they're they're saying oh yeah the next you know main pandemic uh will be a cyber attack um you know how did i know that you know uh <laughs> it's crazy you know can only say so much obviously uh don't want to get too uh freaky on you know conspiracies all that but you know everyone's got their own opinions and their own thoughts you know and so you just have to use your imagination. But uh, they reckon that the yeah, the this uh, cyber attack, or cyber polygon, will be 10 times more devastating than the virus. So, and here we go. Ooh, okay, nice. And so if they're saying, okay, 10 times more devastating well the reason why uh it obviously it would be financially but uh because apparently if they just uh if a cyber attack shut down the internet for one day for every day the internet would be down it's uh starts off at about 50 billion dollars a day the world loses economically um if the actual internet is shut down, $50 billion a day. But uh, on top of that, there are other even worse um, problems is because hospitals, transportation, everything. Um, and you know, hospitals are obviously the number one thing because uh, there are a lot of people that are you know, relying on machineries to keep them alive in hospitals. So, um, yeah, it's really freaky. Well, that's a nice board. These are um, made in Mexico, these chips. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's a really nice board and some see some nice gold fingers. So, and obviously things like, you know, you know, if the internet went down, then, you know, everything. Uh, cell phones, so no communication. Um, YouTube could go down. Oh no, not YouTube. <laughs> um, beautiful, beautiful gold fingers here. That's what we're all uh, about. But I reckon these chips could be uh, quite good. Um, I might crack into one, have a look, and then, yeah, but they are plastic. But just, you know, and they're made in Mexico, and they, you know, Mexican. Mexico uh, mines a bit of gold, and also really nice port here, um, gold plating here. So, uh, and there's a, uh, a Motorola chip, little uh, EEPROM. So, interesting. 
I mean, it doesn't scream out gold, but it should be good. And the other side, okay. So just a power board, transformer. I've got, uh, got a few of the resin dipped tantalum capacitors there. So I get them, and it's just a basic power board and transformer here. Yeah, so uh, I should start up, you know, uh, kick off my um, uh, prepping channel again. It's still there, but <laughs> I haven't, uh, you know, really, it hasn't really taken off. I haven't really sort of focused on that for years, so, but, um, yeah, uh, you know, it, and these cyber attacks, you know, um, we've already sort of some places around the world have experienced, you know, what cyber attacks can do, like, was it, uh, was it Texas, where they had the power outage, or was it the, um, the, the gas, the gas uh, outage and that was apparently a cyber attack you know um, are they real cyber attacks or are they just uh, you know just sort of like using them to say well this is what can happen so you know they've got reference points to say you know um, who knows but uh, I mean even you know th th the big boys from you know, the World Economic Forum, you know, they're, they're the ones that are saying to us, oh, the next pandemic uh, is going to be a, uh, you know, a cyber uh, attacks on the global cyber attacks. And um, yeah, and it's going to be 10 times worse than this pandemic. I mean, goodness gracious. Um, so, guys and girls, um, July 9th is when they're doing their simulation <laughs> and um, and every virtually every main country is involved including Russia and China and um, Australia and um, so they're gonna do this simulation and yeah it's just a bit scary um, really hope that you know we never we never um, have any kind of pandemic like like it I mean goodness uh, you know it's just uh, insane to you know even imagine it and because uh, we're all so reliant on electronics and the internet and uh, even homes are reliant these days they <laughs> they run Wi-Fi they they do uh, turn the lights on all that all that would be off and you know, um, I'm seriously thinking about buying my first generator, even though I'm in the city, and hooking it up. So this is a formatted filter. This is old uh, what, electric electronics research laboratory, laboratory, <laughs> communications. So, um, yeah some kind of research thing it's got nice ports for full, you know gold pins so they're going to be good um and i just noticed something on the board so it didn't have a cover but um what's on the board is uh, super duper <laughs> uh yeah so and, and and another thing this world economic forum is been going on about it's really weird firstly to put into a perspective, um, part of this organisation in Europe bought the biggest um, non-meat uh, um, manufacturing company. Uh, non-meat, you know, the, oh, I can't, can't think of what the term is, you know, where you got, it looks like meat, but it's pl oh, plant-based. So they bought the... Um, biggest plant-based company pretty much in the world for just under a billion dollars and then finally um, about a month or so after they bought this company they um, there was a uh, a cyber attack on meat producing 
um, companies um, like logistics or whatnot that uh, slowed down or virtually almost stopped them um, you know supplying meat to the world or to you know their country and so on but anyway um, so this World Economic Forum have actually come out and said that we should we shouldn't be eating meat products and because it's no good for the environment or our health so you can look at all this sort of stuff up yourself it's it's open it's there they've even got videos on this stuff this is you know legit stuff and they're saying you know yeah uh, they want us to eat less meat <laughs> and um, um, and they're uh, yeah it, it doesn't doesn't sound right anyway um, I understand cattle and stuff do have a bit of a environmental effect but you know so does everything really um, so don't be surprised if uh, this so-called cyber attack is going to once again affect the meat industry. It did here in Australia. And all that really happened was, in the end, meat just went up again, kept going up. Look how expensive meat, meat already is. And... Yeah, I reckon there's more to it. God, this board is pretty hard to get out. So, if you uh, like your meat, maybe start consider getting a a freezer and start. You know, I mean, it's it's no point in just buying a whole heap of meat and stacking it in, into the freezer because frozen meat only lasts so long too. So. But goodness me. But working out a system with a freezer and freeze frozen meat, a rotating system, so you're you've always got the freshest meat in the freezer, but you're rotating it all the time. So, you know, um, you got longer term uh, storage and where we would probably help you would be uh, <laughs> you know just inflation at the moment inflation going crazy and meat is only going to get more expensive so if you like your hamburgers and stuff and there's a shortage of meat well you probably won't be able to go to a shop to get your hamburgers check that out yes baby you know what that is that's a 186 CPU Let's crack her open. Oh, so unexpected out of this formatted filter, you know, research lab thing that it's actually got a 186 CPU. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Another one to the collection. 1970, 78, 87. Yeah, but uh, another beautiful one to the collection. Fantastic. And even those pins there are really nice gold pins and I reckon all these ICs would be pretty good too so I'm probably just going to uh, completely depopulate this uh, I want the, the pins uh, and pretty much everything there so yeah as I was saying I'm thinking of I'm starting to look into generators um, oh look at those pins wow Three sets in there beautiful gold so I don't want a like a full-on serious like an overly serious generator because I'm still here in a city um, it would be a full-on but I just want to start playing with generators just understanding them and just uh, you know even if it's just to um, I want to hook it up uh, to a freezer 
and so if the power goes out at least you know meat is protected the freeze is still going and um, you know maybe just like freezer um, and uh, a, a charging source so have a charger because a lot of the generators these days also have battery chargers can you can hook up you know uh, batteries or a cell phone to charge it up as well um, so yeah just just basically to run um, one light maybe the television and the freezer because I believe that the freezer freezers take up a lot of uh, power and so that's all I want a backup sort of generator just for the the absolute necessities um, because yeah uh, I think it's just good practice you know and so that's what I want to sort of I'm looking into and uh, just over here in this corner here is where I want the generator it's undercover um, it's kind of out the way uh, in that corner there and uh, that's it if I ever leave here the generator would come with me it'll be a, a secondary it won't be a full-on one like you know thousands of dollars or whatever that would be if I had a property then I'd go serious into generating and you know I want a diesel one because diesel is uh, safer to store because you know obviously you've got to have a stockpile of diesel fuel as well um, and so diesel yeah is much safer so that's what I want so this was yeah uh, will talk twin X interface yeah so some sort of old-school connector um, you know like a uh, might be sort of like a old school bit, uh, ethernet kind of thing look at that big old transformer in there that's really vintage so yeah i'm just uh you know i thought uh, i don't know you know i'm blambing on you know again um i should be talking more scrap but hey <laughs> tomorrow well in a few days time you'll see the uh, street scrap video start again so I'll have lots of scrap talk then <laughs> so I'm just basically just talking what's on my mind at the moment you know it's not really something that I, I was planning on talking about but you know it's a bit of a hobby too you know <laughs> uh, talking about uh, crazy things that are going on in the world loaded with chips um, some, you know tantalum capacitors but not a, not a great deal of stuff here um, you know obviously all these removables might be good I've got to check them out but still in interesting so this power supply or power board yeah I'll probably just throw this into um, transformers because they're still getting value out of it because that's aluminium um, and so they're not losing it. if it was steel they'd lose value the scrapyard I mean whereas uh, in this case it's aluminium so they're not losing value um, and there's a few little tiny little tantalum capacitors on this board so yeah transformer oh that was different um, yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, you know don't think I'm like a real doomsday sort of a guy but um, I just I am a bit of a prepper I just like you know the idea of prepping I think it's good practice for everybody to um, prepare in many ways for many different scenarios not necessarily you know like a, a zombie apocalypse or anything like that but usually when the uh, powers that be start telling you what's going to happen it usually does and so 
you know it's clear they want a a um, uh, a global economic reset and so you know um, and they're basically coming out with uh, you know all the possible scenarios that they're they're coming out with and they're saying well this is going to happen you know you think the uh, I don't know what this is it looks yeah, it's some kind of uh, weird modem um, you know but <laughs> you got to sort of like pay attention when they start saying oh well this next pandemic which will be the um, cyber attack pandemic thing because you know once cyber attacks then pandemic happens from there because you imagine unable to communicate no ho uh, hospitals have no power banks are closed and that's another thing you know um, don't be surprised you know if when this so-called cyber attack is going to happen that you're not going to be able to actually access cash from the bank and it'll be the perfect scenario for them to say oh you see well you need this other kind of technology to you know to get funds or whatever you know they just it's all about control and so i think now more than ever or especially in the next year or so is to uh, keep a bit of your money out of the bank system right so just enough to sort of get you by you know even temporarily like you know um because you know just 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 uh, a couple of days ago or a few yeah it was three days ago here in victoria we had a massive storms right and so a couple of the rural areas they got really hit hard flood um trees down uh, a lot of things destroyed and um a lot of them were trying to get fuel to get the hell out of there right but because all the power was was down they couldn't buy fuel with their cards right you had to pay cash and you know so a lot of people were didn't have cash they're they're, they're you know relying on their card to uh buy things and so they're all you know there's, there was lines and lines of cars waiting at the gas stations for friends or family to come along with some kind of cash because their ATMs and their their um, FPOST systems were obviously down because there's no power. So it's just a prime example. And, and another thing is um, that's just surfaced in the last... Um, couple of days is yeah these also these people because they've got no power they're relying on generators and so they're trying to get they're trying to get fuel for their generators and stuff and again if they don't have cash they can't buy it and uh, even the fuel is going to you know slow down because the shortage because you, you've got to get trucks into these areas and uh, currently um, the roads are, you know, like got trees all over the roads. And uh, so, yeah, and apparently it's a nice board actually. Um, yeah, that's a good EPROM there. I can see gold, can't see much gold in that one, but I can definitely see that one. And so generators themselves are sold out, like they can't, no, you know, if you didn't have a generator and unless you were lucky enough to get one um, in the in the one or two days that you had um, yeah no one's got generators they're sold out of generators so yeah just got to prep for all this so I've got quite a lot of these controllers I just want to have a quick look at one because I think it's going to be quite intense to scrap it out on video it'll probably take me half an hour some kind of controller so they've obviously been come out of some box um so the the box wasn't there but he had a lot of these scattered around the property this hoarder you know but the 
gold pins here are probably the best gold pins I've seen. Um, fantastic. So, okay. Oh yeah, oh yeah, right. Yeah, so a lot of wire here. Uh, this is uh, a Sunday afternoon, just sit there and pull out all this wire. Oh, it won't be, won't be that much work, I suppose. But, um, so, because I'm already a bit of a prepper, um, you know, I've got like a, a, a simple pantry, um, just basic stuff, supplies, but, you know, the most thing I've found out about it, even, you know, without any disasters or anything, <laughs> is that it does protect you against price rises, inflation, because um, I buy when it, everything's on half price specials and stuff like that. That's that's where I buy my supplies. Um, a lot of my foods, um, you know, things like flour and baked beans and pastas and rice and God knows what. Um, yeah, but you buy enough of it and you keep rotating only when things are on special. Um, yeah, I find it sort of it helps save money because, uh, you know, I buy, sometimes something will be half price and I use a bit. I'll buy, you know, 30 or 40 cans and then buy it, you know, might have a year of supply or so. And um, I noticed that the prices go up and, you know, not only did I, um, um, you know, have I saved on the, the price rises, but I bought them at half price too. So, you know, it's, it's a good saving mechanism, stockpiling a pantry, um, chickens. <laughs> yeah. So this board is pretty cool. Um, one of the fattest resin dipped tantalum capacitors I've ever seen. That's gonna have a lot of tantalum in it and probably a, quite a bit of silver. There's some mini versions. Um, and yeah, tanties all over. Uh, got these transistors. They don't have gold legs, but they'll still be okay. Um, these ones might. They're the, I think they're removable. No, but uh, they might have gold. But check it out. Look at that little, uh, beautiful little IC chip. Gold cap ceramic, fantastic. You know, it's as good as uh, any C uh, ceramic CPU, you know, this little beauty, it's got, uh, has it, yeah, it doesn't have gold legs, this one, but a beautiful gold cap, and obviously, so that's obviously what I really want, 100%, and uh, yeah, and yeah, just, I'll just take off the tantalums, and leave pretty much everything else, you know, <laughs> this funny, massive tantalum capacitor. Look at that, that's huge, awesome. So, yep, that's definitely a board that I'll, I'll be depopulating a bit. Definitely want that little IC. And the rest of this, well, it does have a fantastic set of gold pins here. So, before I forget, So I, I think no matter where you are in the world, guys, uh, this so-called cyber um, pandemic or cyber polygon, um, it's going to affect the whole world. And so start looking at ways you can um, prepare and, uh, this is a bit fiddly, and protect yourself. You know, start a pantry if you've got a, a partner husband, wife, start talking to them about it and saying, yeah, maybe we should, you know, whoever does the shopping, start looking at um, preparing, you know, at least a, 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 um, a decent stock of pa um, pantry items. So this is a 181 nano voltmeter. Um, yeah, well, nice pins there. I reckon there'll be something awesome in there, but uh, yeah, it's a Keithley 181 nanovolt meter. 
So I, I like to keep these kind of meters, so I, I probably won't scrap this right now, I'll put this away. I've got quite a lot of items like this I put away, just for now. Um, don't want to scrap out everything. Uh, something I just like for just the looks of them. All right, so this one, this is an old HP Hewlett Packard, um, HP IB Extender line okay so it's obviously a uh, a network thing optical fiber <coughs> ports there they haven't been used uh, yeah and uh, this one was made in great britain so it's got a coaxial cable there um, awesome so yeah this isn't something that i would I would keep, so we're going to scrap her. So, <laughs> still going on about prepping and this, you know, potential global cyber attack. Um, so, if anyone has got um, ideas and uh, or just knowledge about generators, what kind of generators? Um, we should be looking at, um, you know, cause I've seen, you know, like very cheap, uh, you know, not very cheap, but compared to, you know, like obviously if, if I had a property, uh, I'd be looking at one of the diesel Honda, Honda, um, generators simply because, well, geez, wow, interesting board. Yeah, the Honda is a pretty popular model here, so, um, you know, people know how to repair them, people know, you know, a, a lot of parts are out and about, so that's what I'm probably going to be looking at later, like a top of the range Honda generator, but I definitely want a diesel generator, not petrol, simply because of the storage safety thing. Um, and because I use diesel, you know, my van uses diesel, so uh, it just makes sense to have a, you know, I can rotate the diesel, so keep it fresh, and just pour it into my van, and, and uh, you know, refill the bottles. I've already got probably, I think I've got three um, plastic diesel, jerry cans um i think they're yellow in color color coded so i've already got three so if i got a generator i'd probably get a couple more and yeah stockpile a little bit of fuel and it's also you know obviously not just for the uh just rotating it through my van but you know sometimes you know who knows the fuel could be out and at least i've got some you know um Geez, a uh, hundred liters of fuel will. Uh, I can drive very, you know, quite a fair distance on a hundred with a hundred liters of diesel. Um, I think my tank holds eighty, so uh, plenty there. Yeah, so let us know if you've got experience in uh, generators. I know there's uh, Chinese ones on eBay, quite affordable, and you know they're only like a few hundred bucks, four hundred bucks, and they're quite big. And I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll just play with one of them just for just for the hell of it, and just to get some experience having a generator and stuff. Um, sort of like prepping for the ultimate prepping one day. There's a little transformer. So let us know guys, um, and yeah I'll probably, uh, start also looking at a, a way to um, charge up batteries, like batteries for torches and stuff, uh, solar panel kind of setup. Um, yeah. 
assuming that there's you know if you don't have power then how do you recharge your batteries you know um, batteries do have a shelf life but I will be uh, adding just regular batteries to my pantry stockpile um, <laughs> even if they got you know it's more of an insurance thing and so just for the torches uh, torches the lanterns um, you know I'm going to be a you know I'm, I'm going to prep you know and it's you know it's more of an insurance policy but you know gosh as I said the uh, the World Economic Forum is this coming out and saying that and usually when they say come out and say things like that it happens just like the uh, corona pandemic you know so you know they obviously know more than more than we do um, so I'm not going to take it for granted I'll say okay well thanks for the heads up and uh, Whilst I'll keep scrapping, uh, but when I go out street scrapping tomorrow or in a couple of days, I'll uh, I've got in mind just a few little uh, alternative things that I'll be looking for and picking up for um, for this kind of reason. Um, yeah, I mean I already have as far as steel bars and stuff, you know, just to you know, be able to repair stuff, repair fences. Um, but, yeah, I'll worry about this later. I did want to get to this optical receivers because they look really interesting. So, how am I going to get this thing off? Um, no. Oh! And uh, yeah, uh, when was it? Two days ago, I, I, because a lot of you know my my chickens, and you know uh, probably known that uh, for about a month I've only had one chicken, and I couldn't, you know, I wasn't going to get chickens anymore. I was going to have a break, give me a chance to, you know, clean out the shed, reorganise everything, and just have a, a one year break of chickens. But I couldn't bear to see my my uh, chicken. Um, so lonely he was so lonely he was just sitting around found a little corner and he'd hide in the corner or she um so yeah i went to get some um some grain and some food for the chicken and then i noticed that the sh at the store they had um a new batch a fresh batch 20 week old chickens so these are these um optical fiber ports unused so optical receivers HP but well, look at that gold hey got a, just a, the gold pins leading into it um. gonna have to take this whole thing off thought thought it just had a cover okay uh, is that maybe yeah so look at that and uh, so yeah so inside there there'll be some kind of like you know channels and network thing it, it won't be like no, I'm not really sure on these old old school but even the legs are gold so I'll just put this into gold recovery like this and uh, when I'm ready I'll go for them really nice there's another one um, aside from that yeah not a bad board they're all plastic ICs so I'm gonna have to look into them and see if do, I can see gold um, otherwise, I'd just prefer to leave it as a as a server grade, telecom grade type of thing. But I will take a look at these. Again, nice fat tantalum capacitors. I love these real fat ones. And uh, these little orange MLCCs. In this case, you know, a lot of time they're blue. These ones are orange. 
there's a little blue tantalum but yeah so these orange ones they're the uh, the old school MLCC type thing so they're worth getting um, yep in between and there's a yellow one good some nice gold pins there awesome yeah that was fun yeah so all right well what do we got I'll do one more oddball thing um, another scientific it's from the scientific instruments division of this company it's their own ICI Australia um, for disposal impact interface all right and we got you know okay so computer slot one computer slot four displacement transducer wow and a force transducer wow this looks super interesting who knows Sp space uh, you know alien technology maybe who knows hope so well it's vintage anyway you're all ready for this Dun, 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 dun. Ah, nothing spectacular. Uh, just something that was designed to do a job, and that's it. Certainly, uh, they didn't think of uh, um, scrappers. <laughs> oh, there's a nice transistor there with gold legs. Some more tanties. Um, and yeah, plastic ICs. I'll have to check them out transform on the board so this is the sort of board you want to cut in half crack it like sort of I just crack it open you know because this side's low grade I throw that into low grade with the transforming capacitors and this side you know well it's a higher mid grade but I'd you know depopulate it probably just get all the stuff so that was uh, straightforward I can do that uh, when I finish the video how are we going uh, What's this, an audio data switch? Okay, so this doesn't look like it's gonna be much, but I'm running out of battery. So just try and open it up, have a quick look. Because um, I can see all these ports, and usually when there's a whole heap of ports, it's not a great deal, but they could all, you know, there could be three good boards there. Just depends on what, what it really is. That. Wow, it's a really heavy steel. Yeah, so they're just uh, the top two are just little boards, just cards for the ports. Ah, just one, you know, at least it's loaded with ICs, be it plastic ICs, but still, eh, I didn't expect too much in that one. <coughs> All right. Well, I just wanted to make uh, uh, this one reasonably short. I, I think uh, it's pretty long anyway. Um, me gas bagging all the time. So I've got a lot of, uh, still going. Um, I'm getting down on a lot of things, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, got rid of a lot of, uh, hang on. Uh, all my circuit boards and stuff. Um, yeah, so I've cleaned up a, a, a lot of the stuff off there. I just loaded up the boards. I didn't, this time, I didn't go through a bunch of boards. Um, there's some pretty amazing things. How's that? Whatever that is. Even the MOSFETs have uh, gold gold pins. Um, look at those fingers. Wow. Oh, look at that. And, uh, yeah, a lot of transistors in there. Um, yeah. Still got a lot of stuff. Actually, um... Yeah, you know, should should have done these 14.4k data link modems. I reckon these are going to be have awesome boards in there. But I've got a couple of them. I noticed, so um, I'll save. I'll save them. But I, f I got rid of all my circuit boards, sold them, cashed out this week. So um, already starting to load up mid grade, low grade. Already, you know, doesn't take me long. Even motherboards scrapped out a few PCs already. Even server boards and power supplies i had uh, two tubs of power supplies in the end 
but I uh, yeah um, at least they're all emptied and cleared out a lot of things um, also laptops and hard drives went so it's getting there uh, um, uh, yeah some of that scrapped out and some still there to go but, uh, at least I've sorted out a lot of stuff that was all over the place so yeah doing good guys and um, um, you know everything's getting down even the, the CD DVD drives are starting to go down scrapping a few every day um, yeah and just sort of getting there but uh, it's this isn't as bad as it looks you know it's just uh, half a day work and I'll get there but that's that means just uh, all these boards shifting them inside to uh, look look at whether I'm depopulating them or or what um, boards here check this board out look at those fingers fantastic um, all the uh, ICs are, are missing out of it but it's got all these dip switches they'll have good gold plating on there too being vintage but those fingers are fantastic and then on this side it's that wiring you know uh, where you got all those uh, gold pins sticking out and they're fantastic gold pins so I, I want to cut them out and um, yeah just de then just depopulate the whole thing take all these dip switches and then just uh, uh, even in these black slots um, there's nice gold pins as well so I'll just depopulate the whole lot and then just throw it away uh, yeah a lot of stuff like that so i uh, still got um uh the uh laptops to go but while i'm here um there's one of my new chickens that's the old one and that's one of the babies 20 weeks old and there's another one in here oh yeah, at the back so two new chickens scrapper chooks uh yeah, I'll get them uh, trained up and uh, start picking up um, tantalum capacitors and MLCCs off the ground for me. And that's yeah, my original pup. So she's just getting used to them. Um, but uh, yeah, and they're just getting used to their surrounds. So there you go. Uh, got plenty of uh, mandarins winter. So this is when they start to ripen. Uh, got enough mandarins. Oh, typical. <laughs> Just as I'm signing off, the battery goes down. But uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm just uh, just chilling out today, having a bit of fun out here. Uh, got a whole heap of parsley growing there, some kale over there. Got me chilies. Got me uh, got a little baby ricotta chili here. Ricotta, uh, my number one chili. All right, guys. Well, still got loaded. Picked up more of these things, these big long power regulator things. Um, they've got huge copper buzz bars, massive extruded aluminium heatsink, and then yeah, uh, good good scrap value there. They're, they're about 120 bucks worth of scrap value alone now with the prices. Uh, some chicken feed just come in, <laughs> uh, more. But uh, yeah, depopulation station isn't too bad. Yeah, got a bit of work to do here, uh, so it's all looking good. So. Uh, yeah so let us know about um generators if anyone knows uh and um yeah look out for my street scrap video that's coming out um got this interesting big box down the bottom there um some kind of uh might be a another oscilloscope like that but uh oh this is an interesting box to scrap out too um yeah that's quite interesting um, yeah, still got a lot of interesting things to go. Um, I'll, I'll just clean up here and just continue on, just clean everything up and yeah, just have a bit of a break and get ready for tomorrow's street scrapping and uh, we'll go out there and uh, yeah, hopefully have a bit of fun. That should be really good. All right, guys, well, keep scrapping, have fun and I'll catch you real soon.